Hi everyone, back again with the new video. In the last video, we have seen how JWT work, that is JSON Wave Token, and how we will be utilizing that for the authentication and authorization purpose. Okay, so now it's time to start creation of the contract. So contract is the main part of our application because we are trying to cover this document management and this different kind of stakeholders will be dealing with these kind of documents. So let's consider one stakeholder is there, another one is there, and they wanted to have a communication in the form of this document. I mean, they have some kind of contractual agreement or something, and they wanted to put it on the blockchain. So that part, we are just trying to implement using the Hyperledger Fabric as a blockchain. So as per the architecture and network topology, we have already gone through it. We just revise it once. On From the front end, we have React.js. APIs are written in the Node.js, and blockchain, we are using as a Hyperledger Fabric. Along with this, uh, we will be integrating this explorer with Hyperledger Fabric so that we can visualize our chain of the blocks and transactions. Another one here, Node.js API, we will be using MongoDB as the authenticated authentication database. So these are the different components we will be dealing. Now, currently we are working on this Node.js and we have covered till now uh, user creation part. Okay. And after that, we will be dealing with creation of the contracts. So once we are done with this kind of all required APIs, we will move to the React.js as well. But yeah, right now we are going to deal with the contract creation. Okay, let me just show you how contract is getting created. Okay, so one of the user from any organization will initiate the contract creation. From the postman, I already shown you how to login into the system, how to activate the user, how to deactivate user, how their certificate, public key, private key are getting created. So those all the part we have already gone. Um, in the API, the code is straightforward. If you're familiar with the code, JavaScript, then that will be sufficient to understand the code. It's a self-explanatory. Again, we are using the same flow out to the controller, controller to the service, service to the database. So for contract as well, we will be doing the same thing. So one of the user will initiate this contract creation, but what are the different things required for the contract creation? Let me just show you in the models. In the models, we will not be able to see this because we're not creating any data, contract data into the MongoDB. We are directly pushing into the blockchain. So when we're creating it, I will show you what kind of objects we are creating. And in the current state database, in the Hyperledger fabric, we are using CowsDB as a current state database. And in their UX, I will show you how this object looks like contract creation, how, what are the different fields associated with there and how we are storing this document as well. Let's jump onto the postman and just see the request. Okay. Now I am logged in as one of the admin user here. Let me just do it again in front of you. Okay. Just I'm hitting admin log admin login. So it will use this user. Okay. Here we have token, the same token we are setting to the uh, token, one of the postman environment variable. Okay, this can be utilized. Now we can see here, there are different kinds of routes. First one is the admin, second one is authorization, third one is the agreement. In the agreement, we have add agreement form data. There is one route. Here we can see we are hitting our IP address colon 3000, our server is running on the 3000 slash v1 slash agreements. Let me show you in the index.js of the routes. V1 is a default. We can see in the app.js. After that, we have agreements. So this is the route we will be dealing with now. Here, we have a post route here. We can see. After agreement, we have nothing. I mean, as per this request. So this is the post request and create agreement. This is the route. Okay, let me just show you the payload here. In the body, we can see form data is there. Now, previously we used to have raw and JSON type. Maybe in the authentication we have somewhere. Let me just show you. Okay, sign up also we can see. The difference between this body, here we selected raw and JSON from this drop down. So make sure you are also doing the same thing. And in the agreement, we have form data. Here we will be sending different kind of fields, key and value. So form data, we have to send like this key and value. Agreement is the file. Okay, agreement, exactly same key we have to pass because 
in one of the middleware, I am just checking whether this agreement is there and accordingly I am doing the further operation. So make sure you are passing exactly the same key what we have here. I will share the postman collection. So you don't need to worry. Do not change anything until unless it is required or you, if you have any kind of custom requirement, then you can change it. Agreement is the type file. You can see here type file and test. I have one test PDF. Another one twist here. By the, in the latest version of the postman, we cannot select any file. Either we have to select uh, in the setting. Let me just show you in the settings. Working directory you have to select right now. The working directory is home, Pawan, postman, files. So inside this, we will be able to select it. If it is not, you won't be able to select other files in the latest version again. So just check it. Maybe if there is an issue, just try to solve it. Maybe you just Google it, you will get easily. But in the latest version, as we have to choose this uh, working directory slash whatever you have. Postman slash files and inside this file, we have to put this test PDF, whatever the PDF we want to upload. And from here, we will be able to upload it. Just select it from there then. Let me just select it. Home. Postman. Files. Okay, I have this test PDF. It's having just to test data something. So, it, I, in actual case, this stakeholder will have some kind of terms and condition and they will be putting on this PDF in the form of um, rules actually, I mean, rules or policies, whatever they want, they wanted to put. Like one stakeholder wanted to buy some laptop from other and they have agreed upon, they will give five uh, years of support for that. Is there any issue or critical, they will replace the device itself. Something like that, they, they can just put the terms and condition. So this is the form of document. Now type of the contract, legal agreement. It, these are just a free fall text, so we don't need to worry. Uh, you can add anything. Title also you can add, add anything. Okay, I'm just adding four. Hardware terms and agreement. Contract, laptop contract. We can just add in this data. So from the front end as, as well, we are going to have it. This contract, uh, laptop contract, first party and second party. Okay, so right now I'm doing some of the operations on the organization. Org1 or Org2. So make sure you also pass same value for this first party and second party. Because when I'm, when I'm fetching the data for organization one, I will be checking if the first party or second party is organization one or not. So again, it totally depends on your use case and how we want it to implement. But yeah, that can be tweaked anything uh, with anything, any kind of business logic. Start date and end date, I'm adding as a timestamp. So it would be easy for us to doing the operations like greater than, less than in the database. When we are dealing with the complex queries and comments if we have any kind of comments now I, i'm just hitting it i will just let you know how it's working send we'll get a response here okay success equal to true agreement created successfully timestamp and this is the payload okay inside the payload So we have different kind of information of the contract. This ID is getting created dynamically at the runtime. We are using nano ID for that, nano ID or um, UU ID something. But yeah, so it's a unique ID will get created. Type of contract, legal agreement, title, owner, current owner is uh, organization one. Who, whoever is creating on the behalf of that organization, the organization will get added right now. User from organization one is creating the contract. So that's why we added this organization as a owner. Contract, org, org ID is the one who has created department legal first party organization one second party organization two the start date and end date document type is agreement okay this document type i will let you know why we added later on when we are dealing with the complex queries comment i we added some comment this it is an array actually created by this user updated by this user same user we just logged in created at updated at. these are the four things we by default we will have for most of the uh, collections and one more thing here, you can see document. We have just uploaded one PDF, but we can see the metadata of that uh, file. Why it is there? So whenever we are creating any kind of contract, we get that file, we put that file on the S3 bucket. And we before putting, we will just calculate the hash of that file and put that hash and the metadata of that file in the blockchain in the form of document object. ID is there, organization is there, name is there. URL where this file is available in the S3 bucket. Uh, content hash, this one. Created by, updated by, created at, updated at. Okay, this is the thing is very important. Content hash. So let's consider 
we are putting this document on the S3 and someone has access to the document and they changed some of the content from that file. How will you get to know? So using this hash, we can immediately identify whether the document is tempered or not. So while putting the data, we are calculating the hash and putting into the blockchain. This, this hash I'm talking about. And later on, someone has tempered. Tempered document will create a ha different hash actually for each one, one byte change in the document. It will just uh, it will just change full, full hash actually. So we can immediately identify the content of the document got changed or not. So using this hash only. That's why we're putting the metadata of this document onto the blockchain. Okay, this is the first part. And how it is happening, we will just jump onto the VS code and check the flow, everything. And we'll validate this document is available on S3. And after that, we'll validate this data is also available on the current state database in the blockchain. Okay. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you so much.